Hello everyone and welcome to our second middle school training video. Today we're going to be discussing how to write your resolution and without further ado, I'll throw it over to our officers for today. Hi, I'm Hadia and I am the gen one of the General Assembly Model UN Vice Presidents. I'm Ansley Skipper and I'm also a General Assembly Vice President at Model UN. So first, we're, we're writing your resolution today, which can kind of seem a little daunting, but hopefully we're going to simplify that a little bit so you know where to get started. So the first thing is, what is a resolution? It's kind of a word we don't use every day, but it's a written proposal that your country is going to bring in front of the UN and ask the UN to support. So it's an idea for improving international relations or aiding other countries. It's a suggestion, it's a request, it's a statement of world opinion. It's something that your country wants to lead the charge on having the whole UN do. Um, and so it's really important when you think about your resolution to think about how it relates to the whole world, not just your country. So it's really easy to think about, you know, my country struggles with drug trafficking and go ask for, you know, the UN to, to send some money to help your country with drug trafficking. And while that's important, you know, you can really easily expand that into um, multiple countries by thinking about, you know, what other countries around my country have drug trafficking and that's a problem. How can we create a larger structure for the international community to deal with this issue? So uh, it should not just deal with the problem with your country uh, because that could, you know, the argument you're going to get, somebody's going to come up there and say, well, great, Jamaica, you've got drug trafficking. You need to fix that for yourself. Why should we give you any money? So you need to make everybody feel like this is a, a problem that is important for their country, it relates to their country, and it relates to something that the whole UN should be dealing with, not just your country. Um, you, it should involve the UN, it should be international, right? So it should be, um, you know, humanitarian workers coming from the UN. It should be money coming from a specific program within the UN, something that's global that not just one country can handle. Um, basically, resolutions can do three things. They can suggest that a nation alter its behavior to be in line with UN principles or guidelines. So if there's a country that your country believes is violating, um, you know, an international law or a UN guideline, you can introduce a resolution to discipline that country, keep them from trying to do those things that they're doing that are wrong. Um, sanctions are a common way to do this. Um, requests that all countries agree to a new, new position or viewpoint on an international issue. So if you want everybody in the UN to say, hey, we're going to focus on climate change, because that's a really big deal and that's really important. Then you'd introduce a resolution that your country is going to lead the charge and say, hey, let's all get on board with this. Let's, let's focus on climate change and here's the things that we're going to try to do in the next certain amount of time to focus on that issue. And then um, you're going to gain approval for a specific program or action. So this is your classic, you know, um, sending humanitarian aid into a disaster area. So if there's been a natural disaster and the UN needs to come in and provide services or help or aid in any way, that's what you're asking for. That's the, we're asking for money because we have this program to try to fix a problem. So those are kind of the most common ones you'll see, but the most important thing here is to think about an issue that's not just in your country, but that your country can help all the other countries get on board to try to solve because it affects the whole world. And you know, you really want to look at what are the what are the UN values, what are the UN principles, what are things that the UN is already working on, and try to you know use those to inspire an issue that you pick for the UN to focus on in your resolution. Um, I think Haya is going to talk about. Uh, um, what actually is going to be in your resolution because you've got to write it once you get your idea. Yes, so next we're going to really look at what are the pieces of a resolution. So we're going to start at the beginning with the title. So your title should be a topic your, well, the title is a topic that should be specific and straightforward, and it starts with the phrase, a resolution to. So in the past, you could do something like a resolution to solve climate change in Jamaica and leading the charge to that. Next, you're going to move into the preambulatory clauses. This basically introduces the problems um, to the UN. So in this, you basically want to have a list of good starting words from the manual that you will see, um, provide necessary background information, like give more details on your problem. Say like, for example, if you're talking about death rates, say, well, how is this disease affecting certain people? Um, how many people are dying? Um, 
basically just kind of explain the problem, its source, and why the UN should care about it. Um, so format-wise, the good thing is it can be as long or as short as you like. Um, also, just use examples of phrases like considering or seeing that or recognizing um, in that preambulatory clauses. So there are five types of preambulatory clauses, the first being general statements and background information on why your topic is important and its impact. Um, next, you will move into citations and mentions of past UN resolutions, treaties, or conventions related to your topic. Um, this can be anything referencing things you, the UN has done in the past to kind of help a problem that is still going on in your country or a resolution that relates to your problem. Um, next, you move into references to sections of the UN Charter, Declaration of Human Rights, or other international laws or frameworks related to your topic. Um, next, you move into the recognition of the efforts or nations, the efforts of nations and or regional or non-governmental organizations in addressing your topic. Um, and finally, you will have quotes and statements made by the UN Secretary General or a UN body agency to, relevant to your topic. That's, that may sound a little daunting, like you need to have all of those. You know, you know depending on your topic, you might have one or two of those. Um, yeah. You really want to like emphasize, you know, why should we care? What is What has uh, the UN done in the past that, that shows that this is in line with the UN values and shows that this is something that people should want to support? So maybe you'll have all, all some of all five. Maybe you'll have a couple, um, but there'll definitely be some background information you want everybody to have so, so you can kind of go ahead and get in there like why they should care about your issue. Yeah, thank you for saying that. Um, it really, my first year, it did seem very daunting to me reading that, that, but I realized soon that I could just have, you know, something referencing the UN Charter or just quote the statements on my problem. So after preambulatory clauses, you're going to have your operative clauses. This is your solution and what your resolution does. So first, you want to have some questions to answer. How are you asking the UN to fix the problem? What agencies will you need to use? And how much will this all cost? Um, one thing I will say about cost is you really want to lay out the exact amount that you'll need. Um, and if you're asking for it for over a period of years, I would definitely put that in there because I've seen some in the past that initially up front, they're asking for 8 million, but later you'll see that they're also asking for an additional 5 million every five years. So just put in everything you want monetarily and write, just write it in there. Um, next, you also want to have a format. So basically, operative clauses are numbered, um, and each clause ends, ends in a semicolon, except the last one, which ends in a period. And that begins with, the General Assembly does here above. Um, and after that, just make sure that in your solution, it stays in the character of your country, don't really infringe on a nation's sovereignty, and stays within the power of the UN. So, you can't really go in asking the UN to eliminate your, the government of your country because that is not something that they can do. Just remember to stay true to what the UN can actually do for your country. And next, Andley will talk about what makes a resolution good. So basically, you've got all that in mind. You've got you know your problem and the information about it. You've got your solution, the the original thing that you're bringing to the table that your country wants to see happen. Um, and so, really, the biggest things are that you can score some points um, in the minds of people who are ranking your resolution um, to think about like is this something my country would do, right? So, you know, Russia wouldn't necessarily call out Russia for election interference in the United States. That wouldn't really make sense. They wouldn't condemn themselves. I once had um, a resolution in my committee that it was, it was, the resolution was from Cuba, and the people represented the government of Cuba, but they were saying that the Cuban government was censoring, um, was censoring the internet in Cuba and should be sanctioned for that. And I got to point out to them that, hey, you're the government of Cuba and maybe you shouldn't be asking for punishment against yourself because that's kind of silly, right? So you have to, not only are you thinking about problems in your country, you're thinking about how your country would go about solving that. And if your country's government would actually see that as a problem or not. Um, so, you know, Cuba's government doesn't think that that's any problem. Um, so 
it's, you know, you have to think about, like, get in the character of your country. Um, you have to think about how your country interacts with other countries. You know, who are your friends on the world stage? Who are your enemies? So how would you treat those countries? Um, you have to think about um, issues that are big in the international community or the UN. What are some things that are already going on that are big topics that how can you write a resolution that, like, you know, feeds into those topics. Everybody's talking about climate change. So is there a unique idea that you have that can capitalize on the fact that, you know, climate change is a big issue that everybody's talking about right now? Um, you know, what, what information is already out there from the UN? What are some statements and, and reports and protocols that are already out there that the UN has that you can use to kind of say, okay, how would the UN solve a problem like this? How have they solved a problem like this in the past? And how can I solve my problem like that? Um, and then also just, you know, what agencies and commissions already exist for your topic. So when you're going in and asking for money, you might say, this is a problem that's kind of an agricultural problem. And there's this department that already has a budget dealing with agricultural problems. Okay, that's what I'm going to use. And that's what I'm going to draw from. Um, so, you know, you want to make sure to be as specific as you can um, and try to use the structure that the UN already has to solve your problem. Um, and I think Tyler has an example resolution so we can actually show you what one of these looks like all together. And this is one that we think is really good and we'd like to kind of show you um, what we think about it. So this is um, a grant proposal for research and development to combat drug resistant bacteria. So this, the country that sponsored this was Luxembourg. And this is not a problem that is directly related to Luxembourg, which is why this is a really good resolution. Um, it's got an international focus. This is something that can benefit everybody in the world. Um, and they're not just asking for money for their country to do this either. They've, they've cited in line, around lines 53 and 54 specific companies. Um, and also they're including other countries. So in that line 49, they're asking that other countries will, um, will have additional incentive to also work on developing these drugs. So this is an international problem. They're proposing an international solution. Um, they've got lots of good um, uh, preambulatory clauses, uh, which I don't know, um, how, let's see how many we have here. So all the way down the line 27, that's all your background information that we were talking about uh, with those key phrases, acknowledging, observing that, cognizant that, keeping in mind that, bearing in mind that, you kind of get the point. These are all those gerunds, I guess your participles, I don't know, what are they, participles? Um, so these are all of your background information. And then you got the General Assembly hereby, and this is where you're starting, this is what you're, you're asking them to approve that they're gonna do. And so the rest of this is actually you know, your solution. And you can see in all of these um, clauses, they're very specific about what they wanna do. They don't just say, we need more antibiotics. That's it. You know, they have a specific system for how they want you to, the, the UN to get involved, and they're gonna go about actually developing and researching to make these new, uh, you know, to combat drug resistant bacteria. Um, one thing I found really nice about this resolution was that in line 42, um, it asked for a grant of up to 8 million US dollars from the United Nation. Um, and then it goes on to specifically talk about which departments it's asking it from. For example, the World Health Organization or the World Organization of Animal Health. I mean, it's just very nice to be so specific that everybody, when they're reading this, can see exactly what you're asking for. Um, another thing that I really loved about this resolution um, is that it just really, as Ansley said, calls upon other countries and gives an incentive for them to resolve a problem that's not only specific to Luxembourg, but can globally improve the quality of life. The last thing I'd like to point out about this resolution, and one of the things that I think makes it so clever, um, is that in line 53 and 54, um, they specifically request that initial funding be given to um, two specific companies. Both of those companies are headquartered in Luxembourg, uh, meaning what this resolution does is ask for the UN to give money to companies based in Luxembourg so that those companies can generate drugs that will benefit the entire world. Um, it's a very clever humanitarian way to bring UN funding into someone's country. Um, and it shows that whoever was writing this resolution was keeping in mind the character of their country. Um, obviously, Luxembourg's government and representatives to the UN would be interested in bringing more UN funding into Luxembourg. And this resolution does that in a really clever way that everyone can get on board with. Um, this is a top-notch resolution, 
The only thing I would point out formatting wise is we do suggest uh, that all of your operative clauses, that's all those clauses after line 29 where it says the General Assembly hereby, start with a number. Um, so line 31 should read one dot calls upon the UN. Line 34 should read two dot draws attention. Um, and that just makes it easier for people to talk about your plan in debate. I would also say too, typically your title is going to be a resolution to. Um, so this is a, this is grant proposal for, and I, I think, you know, that again, um, these are more, more minor formatting tweaks now, but a resolution to is pretty much how you want to start your, uh, your title. Question. When I'm writing my resolution, should I create a new UN agency or should I try to use one that already exists? You should definitely try to use one that already exists, I think, um, unless there's just a, this is a problem that has never been tackled before, but most of your, your problems are gonna fall under one of those agencies. And to try to get every country on board with a massive amount of funding taken away from a different agency to start a new agency, it's just, it's just not going to happen. So stick, stick with, you know, these are pretty broad, you know, food and agriculture. That's a, that's a pretty broad area, you know, World Health Organization. These are pretty broad formats to go in and create a program from rather than create a whole new agency. You don't need to do that. You know, your problem's going to fall under one of those agencies already. Question. Um, what should I do if I'm really passionate about a specific issue um, that doesn't impact my country specifically? Like if I am a country that doesn't have nuclear weapons, but I want to write about nuclear disarmament. Is that okay? Uh, my argument there is that this issue does affect your country. Nuclear proliferation does affect the safety of the whole world. And you know, the fact that you don't have nuclear weapons while another country that might be your adversary does makes you less safe. So it's all about how you frame your resolution and frame your argument. Um, and you know, really do appeal to the fact that this is a global issue that makes everybody less safe, including your country, but not just your country, because your country is not the only country that doesn't have nuclear weapons. So most often, I think there's always an angle to be taken um, that can show how it affects your country, because thinking globally is what Model UN and what the real UN are all about. And so most most problems, you know, affect most countries. It all kind of interlocks. Um, that would be my that would be my argument on that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I would just sorry. Um, I would add on to that. Just as she said, just keep in mind that this would affect not only your country but countries surrounding you, um, and it's a global issue, not just something that only your country is going to deal with. Especially if you don't have nuclear weapons yourself. Um, question: Does a resolution need to be long or short? Does it matter? Personally, I don't really think it matters as long as you're very clear in what you're asking for and what your problem is. I have seen some resolutions take up 81, 85 lines that are good, but then I've also seen some that are maybe 50 lines and they're amazing because they are very clear about what they want, um, what they're asking for from the UN and what the UN can do to help solve the problem. Thank you. Uh, question, what if you don't know exactly how much your resolution will cost? My suggestion there would be to come up with an estimation of, of you know, what you think. So if, if you're installing water filters or you're providing water filters, well, what's the cost of a water filter? And then like guesstimate the population and do some math, which I know those of us who are government people don't always love, and, um, you know, come up with kind of a ballpark. Um, other than that, you know, you could put some kind of structure in there to say, you know, we think it'll be this much um, and would come back to either ask for more or would, you know, return the money back to the agency if it's too much. You kind of get complicated, but I would say go with your best guess. Nobody's going to be like, hey, hey, Cuba, a water filter is only $5 and there are only X many million people in your country. You fib some numbers there. I, I would say that's kind of overestimating how people are going to, how closely they're going to scrutinize your, your resolution. How should you prepare to answer questions about your resolution? What kind of research should you bring into the conference? Um, I think really you need to un fully understand what your problem is in your country. Um, for example, I did one last year on um, perfecting 
how dementia, like creating a dementia center in um, my country. And so I did research on what part of the population is affected by dementia, um, how many people are dying of dementia, what, where do they rank in, globally in patients with dementia. So I think you just need to come in, honestly, more, the more information you have, the better. Um, so, cause you don't always know what questions will be asked. Um, I, as I said, I did one on dementia and I got asked about Parkinson's disease. Like they're just, just come in with as much information about your specific problem as you possibly can. And just understand that it's okay to have too much information, but it's better than having too little information. And in terms of your solution, so I always think about things um, I, I like, you know, doing a good con speech and a debate, right? So when I've got my resolution, I'm preparing for what somebody like me um, might con it to be. So, so I look at, I'll read sources on, um, you know, what's the opposing viewpoint to this issue? Or, um, you know, I'll look at previous resolutions that have tr been tried on my topic and see why they failed and see if any countries said why they voted against them. Um, you know, I'll do some research to see what different countries' positions are on those issues. So I can expect that Russia might say this because in the real world, Russia says this. Um, you know, I always like, uh, I'm the president of the government club at my school, so we always practice together. And I always like to hear what people in there ask because they'll think of something that because I've been dealing with the topic for a long time, I, I thought made sense that I hadn't explained. So I'd say get some outside information, get some outside views, not only on the issue, but also on how your resolution is written. Um, and try to anticipate, you know, an oddball question um, or, you know, what the opposing argument would be to, to your topic and to your solution. Question, uh, where can I find additional info about resolution writing or example resolutions to look at? Your best resource would be the MUN resources page on the CCE website.